thought for today is I finally heard on the news why there is an egg shortage. Apparently the hens are now identifying as roosters. So today we look at our first reading, which is from the book of Genesis chapter four. It is the powerful story of Cain and Abel, the two sons of Adam and Eve. And it mentions that Adam had relations with his wife Eve and she conceived a son. Notice that is really the purpose of marriage is the unitive and the procreative aspect of marriage. Humanae Vitae talks about that, Vatican II. The church has always seen these two ends of marriage, the unitive and the procreative aspect of marriage. So we see that right here in the book of Genesis, how Eve gave birth to a son. She says, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. It's always God who's involved in every conception, God infusing the immortal soul into the a new life at the moment of conception. So yes, it's husband and wife that come together in union and it bears fruit, and, but God is directly involved in infusing that immortal soul in that new life. And they named their first son Cain, and then they were blessed with another son who they named Abel, and mentions that Cain was a tiller of the soil, a farmer, whereas Abel was a keeper of flocks, a shepherd. And the fathers of the church see in Abel, the innocent shepherd, Jesus himself, that is it's a foreshadowing or a type of Christ to come. Abel was virtuous and holy and innocent, and yet he was killed by his brother Cain because of anger and jealousy. So Cain certainly represents, um, spiritually represents the devil who wants to destroy our souls in hell because of his anger and his jealousy. We could also see you know, Cain representing eventually the scribes and the Pharisees, religious leaders, the Roman soldiers who would put the Lord, the innocent one, to death. So it mentions that they both offered a sacrifice to God. They both gave God an offering. It mentions that Cain brought the fruit of the soil, which would be a cereal offering, a grain offering, which is a good offering, but it seems to indicate that it was not the first fruits of his, of his um, toil that almost was like a leftover that he gave to God. Whereas it says that Abel, for his part, brought one of the best firstlings of his flock. So again, it's mysterious why Cain's sacrifice was not accepted and Abel's was. But again, the commentators say it was because God sees the heart, that God saw the heart of Cain that was sinful and filled with evil and eventually anger and jealousy, whereas Abel's heart was pure, it was holy, it was loving, and he gave his first fruits to God. And that's a, a great reminder for us that when we get our paycheck, we should give the first fruits to God, pay God first in a sense, give God that first 10%, and that could be to the poor, to the needy, to pro-life, to the church, so we should first, when we do your budget, give God first fruits, give God first fruits, not give God the leftovers. And oftentimes people, you know, live their life and then they just toss, you know, a dollar or so in the basket. That's not giving God the first fruits. So give God that first 10%. And again, it could go to charities of your choice, to the poor, to the needy, whatever God is putting on your heart. So we have, these two offerings, one is accepted by God. It says, God look with favor on Abel and his offering because God could see Abel's heart as holy and pure, whereas Cain's was not. There was something sinful within Cain and God even tells Cain, you can still do well. You can still hold up your head, but if not, sin is a demon lurking at the door. What a powerful image that is that sin is a demon lurking at the door. His urge is towards you, and yet you can be his master. So Cain had a choice. All of us have free will. Cain could either reject sin and choose God, or he could give in to that sin lurking at the door and be overcome by that, or he can control it. He can be the master of the sin. But we know the story. 
we see that uh, Cain gave in to his anger and his jealousy, and he uh, hated his brother in his heart. He was envious and jealous of that. So he told Abel, let's go out into the field. And when he was in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. So it didn't take long for original sin to turn into actual sin or personal sin. As G.K. Chesterton said, that out of all the doctrines of the faith, the one that is self-evident is original sin. We see it right here. It did not take long for sin to enter the world and to even bring about violence. Notice violence at the root of violence is anger and jealousy and pride. Well, then God says to Cain, where is your brother Abel? And he says, am I my brother's keeper? Of course, the answer is yes. We should all be concerned for all humanity. We should all be careful to, and to love one another. And what does God say? What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the soil. What a powerful thought that is, that the blood of Abel, the blood of the innocent, always cries out to God for, for mercy and for prayer. And we think, for example, the Holocaust, six million Jews killed in the Holocaust, or all the millions killed by Stalin or Lenin or Mao Zedong, the blood of all those innocent people cries out to God. And in our own, our own country, since 1973, Roe versus Wade, 65 million unborn babies' blood cries out from the soil to God. And so we pray for God's mercy. That's all we can do is ask for God's forgiveness and pray for God's mercy for the conversion of heart. If the blood of Abel cried out to God, so the blood of all these millions cries out to God as well. So let's pray today for a greater respect for the sanctity of all human life. Let's pray that God will uproot any anger, jealousy, pride from our hearts and the hearts of all world leaders that, because that leads to violence. And whenever we see violence, underneath violence is anger and pride and greed and uh, avarice. So let's pray for God's mercy upon our world today.